You're about to watch a Trains Newswire video. If you enjoy what you see, consider watching some of our other full-length videos. Hotspots, Horseshoe Curve, Tehachapi, Chicago Racetrack, and more. Locomotive, the video companion to our best-selling special issue. And a special collection from documentary producer Rich Luckin. All these and more are available from our website, KalmbachHobbyStore.com. Good morning, Trains Nation. Today is Friday, February 22nd, all day until midnight. We are so glad you could join us for another episode of Trains Newswire Roundup. I am Steve Sweeney. And I'm Brian Schmidt. And we're so glad, so glad you could join us. Brian, what do you think? We got some news this week. We do? There's well, news and rarity? It's not just history? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there's history, there's news, there's steam locomotives, but we got some big news. Can I ask you to touch off with California? California high-speed rail. So Trump wants his money back, and he got Ron Vittori to write a letter to say as much from yes. the FRA. And the state has until February, no, March, 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 March 5th, 5th to, yeah, February 5th is, that deadline has passed. No, it's March 5th to uh, explain why it should get to keep the money. And we're talking about, what, $3.5 billion or 3 something? $3.5 billion, almost. It's kind of, a, it's, a, it's a rounded figure. Uh, mm -hmm. It's two different federal grants over the years. Yeah. And the, the, the thought is that if the state's not going to connect Los Angeles to San Francisco, it doesn't deserve the money that it got to do that. Right. Even, Discuss. Even though the state says, we're going to do that maybe someday. We're still pushing towards that. We're just not doing that right now. Yeah. And, uh, if yeah. you believe that. Yeah. So that's, so, that's, so that's fun. So last week, Jim and I bantered about that they're going to have, you know, like a high-speed rail line from mm -hmm. the, basically nowhere to nowhere in California. If you live in Bakersfield sorry. or Merced. I'm sorry. Steve Sweeney said you live nowhere. Sorry. Hey, I grew up in a town of 28,000 people. I understand. But it's like high-speed rail, not... Not, no, no offense. Address your letters to Steve Sweeney, Sweeney. care of. Kalmbach Media. Yeah. No, but I mean, you know, the whole the whole deal was to get from not, LA not to care San Francisco. Tool time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm falling into that better than you think. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, it was supposed to go from uh, LA to San Francisco. It was supposed to be what three, four hour ride. Yeah. You know, and now it's you know, and now if if the FRA is going to pull the grant, they're not probably going to be able to finish it because they're going to have to cough up the money to pay back the government before they finish building whatever it is they're doing now, you know, the construction. Which you have a photo gallery up on We do have a Newswire. photo gallery on Newswire from uh, last Friday week, last week, yep. yeah. Yeah, so that's interesting. Um, speaking of California, we got a uh, report out this week from Dan Zukowski. Zukowski, yeah. On Los Angeles and the 2028 Summer Olympics, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. If you didn't know this, check out this story. LA Metro is planning 28 different transit projects. Um, just say broadly, people moving projects, bus lines, pedestrian projects, mm -hmm. but 11 of those 28 are going to be rail projects in and around the greater LA area or the LA metro area. Get it? Haha, uh -huh. LA metro, LA metro. And really some, some really cool stuff here, and it's all going to be done in time for the 2028 Olympics. The really interesting thing to me as a, as a rail guy, is I hope it's interesting to you too, is that they're not just um, spending a lot of money on the Olympics to spend money on the Olympics, like some cities. Let's build a stadium. Let's build a venue. Let's they already build have some. the venues. They've exactly. done this twice already. Right. They already have the venues. So they're going to take the billions of dollars they would have spent on the venues and put it into public transit, which is going to be around a lot longer and a lot more useful than will be a giant stadium. Mm -hmm. That's right. Or another giant stadium. And useful to us who go there after the Olympics. That's right. For it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I look forward to this. Check out that story. Um, Alberta. Did you hear about the story about Alberta? They bought some choo-choos. Yeah, well, they came to an agreement. The province, I think it's the province of the Alberta. The province of Alberta, yeah. Yeah, came to an agreement with Canadian National mm -hmm. and Canadian Pacific to haul a whole bunch of crude oil, you know, to you know, for export mm -hmm. to somewhere else, which they is really have a big their deal. Own equipment. They're going to be leasing equipment at first, mm -hmm. and um, you know, to be determined if they're going to get um, you know buy their own equipment. But full story on Newswire. Very good. That's pretty cool. Buying Look, equipment. I hear they're doing that in Chicago now. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Metro. If oh, you haven't heard, Metro is getting this. 15, is it, I think? I'm a little vague. 15 yes. SD70 Max from Progress Rail, which is EMD, yeah. a hometown company. And uh, they're going to be former freight engines. We don't know yet what their heritage is. I mm -hmm. would guess they're former BNSF because okay. 
a bunch of those are running around in the lease fleet now. They were on lease to NS in the last year. Yeah, but, but we'll see. But they're not—they're not just going to buy them straight. They're going to be rebuilt. They're right? going to be rebuilt, repainted into Metra to kind of match the the new modern black, white, blue, silver scheme, and they're yeah. going to uh, yeah. going to have head and power installed, so they can pull commuter trains. Seventy max pulling commuter trains. Mm -hmm. I think this is awesome. There's passenger seventy max in Alaska already. Yeah, but they run usually pairs of them on the long distance trains. Yeah. So this will be different. I'm sure they don't go as fast as a metro commuter train does. So but they will. It'll be fun to watch. And but watch they will the soon. Next couple of years, yeah. Yeah. No, oh, that'll be fun. I can't wait to see that. That's going to be good. Um, Chicago, cold weather, it sort of sort of rolled up into one. Because you remember the polar vortex a couple of weeks ago where it was like 30 degrees below zero? At least I remember it's 30 <sighs> below zero. Yes. 10 below zero. It was bad. It was really cold. Well, if you ever said it's cold, and you'd say, how mm -hmm. cold is it? It's so cold, it's cutting into weekly traffic patterns. Um, there were railroad executives out this week who said that it's as much as cut their capacity in half in certain places on the routes, even in Canada, where you think they would expect this stuff. Yes, it's even too cold for the Canucks, believe it or not. Uh, full story from Bill Stevens well, on Newswire. If they the trains twice as twice as long, then they get that capacity back, right? Isn't that how all this works? Uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> think so. I, I, I think that's a precision scheduled snafu. Ooh, yeah. ooh. Yeah, at that point. Um, PSS. Yes. Okay. Turntable, Altoona. Photo gallery. Did you like this one? It was pretty cool. Tisha Boggs uh, got linked up on a story for Norfolk Southern replacing the mm -hmm. turntable at Altoona's fabled Juniata shops. And it's really kind of cool. We got a photo gallery up on it and a story about how they actually did this. The turntable that was replaced was from the Pennsylvania Railroad in the 1950s. I think it was circa 1955, mm -hmm. which would have been the last time that the Pensy would have done anything big as far as, you know, turntable or projects go. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's a really awesome thing. And they still need the turntable. They're turning, they're turning uh, locomotives and and cars and little switch well, engines all the time. There, and then you just turn those now and then. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, cool story. Check that out on Newswire. And um, Sound Transit. Go for it. Sound Transit. Dick's Drive-In, mm -hmm. which is apparently famous out in Seattle. I had never heard of it, but I heard about it this time. They, uh, Dick's Drive-In just opened up a new location in Kent, Washington. And Sound Transit is considering that exact location where the restaurant was just built for a new transit maintenance shop. And people are up in arms about it. How dare Sound Transit, how dare Sound Transit. Read the story, uh, read the comments, that's also pretty interesting. Uh, I think, I think it's, it's sad that you can't have good fast food and good transit mm -hmm. in the same place. I think they should, they should find a way to unite and then they would take over the world. I got nothing, <laughs> nothing I can say on TV anyway. <laughs> Okay, what else you got for us this week? One last thing I have is if you're looking to go to Promontory, actually Promontory Summit for the events on May 10th. Yes. The, the letting the, people in by the car load. You yeah. buy a car pass. Yeah, and the the, first, for the 150th anniversary yeah, of, the, yeah, yeah. of the joining of the rails of the trains. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we have an issue for that and a DVD. Yeah. Um, you go in by the car load and the first round of them is all sold out. You will be able to buy more maybe if you get quick enough at it, mm -hmm. and April 1st is when the next batch goes on sale. So if you, it's if you want to actually drive up to the National Park Service facility up in the mountains. That'll be cool. Yeah. Trains will be there. Trains will be there. We will be there. Jim and I will be there. I hope he bought the pass because I didn't. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's good. I got one last story. Marijuana is now legal in Canada mm -hmm. to use. We're not passing judgment one way or the other on that. But because the world is the way it is, it needs a commodity code. Mm -hmm. And so Railink has a commodity code on it. Railink does a lot of administrative stuff and car tracking for the railroads. And BNSF Railway has announced that uh, it is trying to weed out marijuana before it can get into shipments in the mm -hmm. US. Weed it out. You got it. Check out the story on Newswire and also check out the comments. Those are also as interesting as the story itself. For everyone at Trains, we hope you have a great weekend.